Hey, welcome to Monday's show. This is uh, March, March, uh, April 4th. Yeah, April 4th. There we go. Uh, January, March, April. <laughs> anyway, see, <laughs> April 4th. Uh, I wanted to kind of do something that I hadn't done yet. And that is basically, this is from, as you can see, the uh, Real Progressives, uh, if not here, and uh, Real Progressives, uh, a quality, um, if you, I mean, if you're not uh, up to, if you're not following Warren Mosler, uh, Steffi Kelton, uh, if you're not following Mike Norman, or the next best thing, uh, and a prominent uh a knowledgeable website and organization to learn modern monetary theory from it would be real progressives uh they interview countless uh uh experts in, in uh, modern monetary theory ask all kinds of questions uh make anybody who is watching or listening to them more knowledgeable uh make them think and make them learn a lot about uh, modern monetary theory. Um, Mike Norman, uh, he he pretty much helps you. Um, it, I think it's about Pitbull Economics. Uh, he basically helps you uh, learn how to trade uh, uh, using MMT as a lens to to look at trading on everyday on, on everyday uh, Wall Street and stuff of that nature. So uh, you know, uh, check him out. Uh, none of which I'm. I'm getting endorsed by or anybody else like that. It, it's MMT is a is a quality um, lens to look through uh, as far as economics goes. If you look at what um, happened during the financial crisis, a lot of people that saw this coming either knew functional finance, uh, also uh, can just see the writing on the wall. Uh, MMTers, uh, quite a few of them actually. Uh, uh got that right as early as 2001 um anyway look all that up uh but anyway this is from the man himself uh warren mosler and since i actually haven't uh been able to get get a thought across to do like a small little video and put on my youtube channel um i thought i would just go from here as i as i'm real progressive as, as, you know, as you can see Anyways, to see, uh, this is a more complex definition from a prominent MMT or uh, MMT economist. A more complex definition doesn't make the prior definition wrong. So let's see. And this, if you look at what ha was happening in Russia and what other uh, what the IMF is about, uh, all of this will make sense if, if that if you're not already knowledge uh, knowledgeable of of uh, the economy, if you're, if you're already not an economist or whatever else, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, first uh, is uh, a sovereign country uh, it has the ability to issue its own currency exclusively, uh, requires all taxes and related obligations to be uh, extinguished in that currency, uh, can purchase anything that is for sale in that currency at any time and chooses without financial constraints, that includes all idle labor. Uh, its central bank sets the uh, the interest rates. The current uh, the currency floats. The uh, government does not borrow in any currency other than its own. This appears solid, but in fact is too wrong. Uh, another wrong de de uh, another wrong definition. Uh, the big hole in this, and this is coming from the guy who actually you know brought it forward. Um, uh, a whole, okay, so is the external borrowing constraints item six in the list. If a government generally could purchase everything the currency needed is on uh, wait, the uh, country, excuse me, needed in its own currency, then it would indeed be monetarily sovereign. Now, uh, obviously, reading from this, and now we see the author's definition of MS or monetary sovereignty, claiming this is the right definition, extending the obscurity, absurd, absurdity. There we go. But no country is self-sufficient. All countries need imports. So, item three on the list is a uh, real uh, herring. Uh, let's see, uh, elements of the definition are read. Uh, 
elements of a definition are red herrings. A government may be able to buy anything that is for sale in its own currency, but that doesn't uh, include oil or gas or uh, raw materials for industrial production or, base, or basic foodstuffs. Uh, to buy the to buy those you need us dollars indeed the, these days you are you i assume that's the consumer need uh, dollars for, mo for most imports uh, now most consumers buy imports with their local currencies currency exchange is generally done by the local uh, importer uh, or the foreign exporter uh, most of global trade is conducted in us dollars yes that's often in uh, numerator or uh, numerator the, the only country in the world that can always buy everything the country needs is its own in its own currency and therefore uh, never needs to borrow in another currency is the United States because it, it is the sole issuer of the U.S. dollar. This is another way of expressing what is known as uh, its exorbitant privilege. This definition demonstrates ignorance of the numer uh, numerator con concept and, need and needs like those uh, there is a failure to, the to distinguish between the currency of denomination and the currency of denomination uh, of uh, accumulated net financial assets. However, the dark side of this is that the U.S. is obliged to run wide uh, current account and fiscal deficits. That would be the bright side. Imports are rare, uh, are real benefits, and exports are real cost. And the net is known as real terms of trade. Because global demand for the dollar for uh, far exceeds U.S. production, yes, a policy designed to support net exports at the real cost of the microeconomic or economy. Excuse me. When it attempts to close these deficits, trade deficits, global trade uh, and investments shrinks, causing market crashes and triggering recessions around the world. Sometimes there is even a recession in the U.S. itself. The U.S. last attempt to run a fiscal surplus ended in the 2001 market crash and recessions. Recession, excuse me. Um, as written, the author is presuming uh, the U.S. proactively targeted fiscal surpluses to reduce their deficits. And I should probably go back here and clarify that uh, he's actually responding to uh, Francis Coppola. There we go. <laughs> I, I knew I missed something there. But anyway, let's see. Da -da -da. Let's see. Okay. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Let's see. Global trade and investment shrinks, causing market crashes and triggering recessions around the world. Sometimes there is even a recession in the United States. Okay, I've already read that part. Uh, so as written, the author is presuming the U.S. proactively targeted fiscal surpluses to reduce trade uh, trade deficits. This was not uh, the reason for the surpluses. Those were generated by tax structure along with rapidly increasing private sector deficits due to the tech by 2K and real estate man, uh, manias. MMT uh, adherents uh, like to cite this as evidence of the eliminating the government deficit as or in, an, in any country will re result in recession. This is stretching things uh, considerably. But this is stretching things uh, considerably. Fred shows uh, us that even in the U uh, damn. U.S. only. There we go. Uh, U.S. only one recession in the last century has been preceded by a government surplus. Again, a gross error of logic, uh, saying that eliminating a, uh, a government deficit can result in a recession, is not to say that all recessions are caused by a government surplus. Now I'm guessing that obviously these are the the statements from uh, from from a author, uh, from an author of a an article that Warren Moser is uh, replying to, um, and the in bulk I'm guessing these are, those are his answers. Um, again, a gross error of logic saying the eliminating eliminating a government deficit can result in recession is not to say that all recessions are caused by a government surplus. 
Of course, uh, of course, many developed countries do in practice pay for imports in their own currencies. Governments, banks, and corporations meet dollar funding uh, need, uh, meet dollar funding requirements by borrowing in their own currency and swapping into dollars in the financial market. This diminishes the need for dollar-denominated borrowing, either by government or the private sector. These countries, therefore, have a considerable degree of monetary sovereignty. Uh, I guess this is uh, his, um, the Warren Moses uh, answer. This is just a further expansion of the author's definition of uh, monetary sovereignty. But it is not uh, absolute as it, uh, as it is in the United States. It crucially uh, depends on the stability of their currency and the uh, creditworthiness of their borrowers, both of which are a matter of market confidence. I guess this is where uh, Warren actually uh, answers, I believe, no point in continuing as the rest is continue, uh, continue to cont uh, attempt to proceed in logical progression with the, um, with the same compounding breakdowns of logic. MMT is about pure force of logic as per soft currency economics, which this author, Coppola, uh, is apparently unwilling to or incapable of recognizing. Um, okay, feel free to distribute. Let's go back to the main thing here. Um, now, this is the part that I'm, I've been learning as far as the part goes and trying to understand as far as the overall economy, how money works, and where it comes from, and all of those stuff. Uh, to get back to the basics here, um, one issue, uh, issue, uh, issue its own currency exclusively, which means we we, uh, UK, Canada, Japan, uh, China, I think also, uh, we create our own currency. We're not, we're not dependent on other countries uh, exclusively for our currency and all that stuff. And I don't think it's uh, actually uh, pegged to anything in regards to other countries' um, denomination or monetary denominations. Uh, requires all taxes and, and related obligations to be ex, uh, extinguished uh, in that currency. This is where we saw Russia. Russia has decided. Uh, Russia decided to have like all of the countries that are un unfriendly uh, to um, to open up ruble uh, uh, card uh, bank accounts, so that when they want to purchase oil, gas, whatever. And they would be paying in ruble, so that that's a whole that's a whole reason why they're able to sustain uh, that part of the war. Uh, at least that's from what I've seen, and that's what it looks like. Anyway, um, there aren't. I said from the very I said from the very beginning. Once I realized that J.P. Morgan Chase was actually uh, was actually processing um, their uh, debt payments uh, in U.S. dollars. Once, they were, once I realized that they were able to do that, I knew they'd be fine because not a lot of their debt is actually in, in U.S. dollar. So a lot of their debt is actually in rubles, which we're able to pay. Anyway, so let's see. Uh, can purchase anything that is for sale in that currency at any time it chooses without financial constraints. That includes all idle labor. Uh, for its central bank sets the interest rate. That's true. I mean, that's what the Fed does. Um, and the Fed is our, is our central bank. Um, the currency flows. In other words, when selling the currency in exchange for other currency, uh, there's a, a the the rate of the the cost of transferring or exchanging that currency is floating. It all depends on what I I guess what the uh, what the market says as far as the value of of that currency. Um, like you know, how much is how much is the trading for that sort of thing? Let's see. And the government does not borrow in any currency other than its own. Uh, yes. Do we, do we borrow as a country? Uh, yeah, but we don't borrow any other currency. We borrow from our own banking system, central bank, and that's one of the reasons why there's been that's why uh, QE's been doing uh, been going. Um, now at first. As far as uh, quantitative easing, I was thinking that, that that they were able to, uh, like give reserves to banks to make sure that things don't collapse. But 
that that sounds like it's one of the ways but another way is when they purchase assets you know like uh marcus back security and all other stuff and they're able to buy those from banks and put money back and put money in the system and then every 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 purchase them uh which is repose uh repurchase them to take the money out so which means that they buy the assets then the banks rebuy the assets bring them back bring them back that for loans and stuff like that um well they have currency on hand for the loans for it to be able to be put in inside the bank um anyway uh, if you like what you hear please uh uh subscribe um this will also be on my Substack, stack calvin taylor dot substack dot com i just wanted to read a little bit of this part right here um Anyways, I will be right back. <laughs>